welcome back to me and my green hair that I am thoroughly enjoying even though many people have expressed that it's not very well done and that's my aesthetic at this point. I'm in a different place today because it's really fucking warm. <laughs> it's really, really hot. It's like 32 degrees out. And this is the closest place that I can think of that's next to the window. Yes, I know you can see all my shit on the table because I'm sitting in front of my mirror. And this is like, I mean, you can see some of my photographs, but this is like one of my um, favorite pieces of memorabilia from the summer. This was when I went to uh, museums with Armin Navabi. And uh, this is just like a little reminder of that something that I did. So if you want to check out him just telling me about history um please go and subscribe to all of his channels um because that content will be there for you to see and it's actually extremely interesting and you know i ask a lot of weird questions as i do and i behave really weirdly so go and check that out um so my content over the last over the whole of summer has kind of been a mess it's kind of been all over the place some of it's been extremely depressing um some of it's been um you know just very random like me dyeing my hair and i wanted to do something that i you know sort of originally started with which is just me talking about me and my life um and today i thought that i would share my you know the lessons that i've learnt since leaving a, an abusive household and leaving isolation and I would like to first um, disclaimer uh, if this is not your thing and if this is somewhat triggering to you please do not feel obliged to watch this video even if you feel like you have to support me please do not put your you know your mental health in jeopardy just because you like me um, you know thumb down the video boo you know just sound off in the comments and tell me that you want more content for you because I'd rather you did that than you know have a mental breakdown because of what I posted um, but I mean it's not going to be extremely triggering I am going to be talking a little bit about uh, the abuse that I suffered um, and I'm going to be talking a little bit about the isolation but for the most part it's just going to be like the things that I've learnt and just answering some of your questions um, but disclaimer out of the way um, I would like to talk about that today and I've just realized that I only have about 38 minutes on my camera so let just give me a second and I will return I have a little bit more time on my hands now since I've just like cleared some of my memory um, but I would like to just express the form of isolation that I was in and the forms of abuse that I was just just briefly because I, honestly I'm I really don't want to cry today <laughs> I think that's gonna be a goal for today um, but basically I was isolated I was quite sheltered my entire life but I was truly isolated truly isolated for about two to three years um, between like being 17 and 20, 21 ish. So that, that I would say that I was truly isolated. Like even though I was attending school um, because my mother was ill and I had taken up the responsibility of looking after my siblings of which I have five who were younger than me. Um, I was only going into school to do my exams. I was not, you know, really attending school and, you know, I didn't have very many close friends. My friend Paul was very, very small to begin with um, because I went to an Islamic school and literally no one, you know, really related to me in the way that I was because I was the school weirdo. Um, so I didn't have any close friends and I wasn't attending school regularly and then after my mother passed away I had basically become her. I didn't have an outside job, I was just taking care of my siblings and my family, uh, like my extended family, had decided to isolate me because they didn't like my dad and because they didn't like him because he, they, he would yell at them because he's a psychopath. Um, they would just come like once every month or so just to make sure that we were alive and then disappear within a few hours um so i was truly isolated you know my neighbors didn't really visit me the only time that i could go outside was to drop off my siblings to school um and then you know i would come home and be alone all the time 
um, and that was the form of isolation that I was in. And I wasn't allowed to like go to the library or go shopping, anything that I, I say needed, but um, my dad would basically get us the bare minimum of everything. Um, like he wouldn't even buy us deodorant, for example, because he didn't believe that it was necessary. Um, so I, it was, you know, anything that I needed, um, he would buy it. Um, sometimes after I dropped off the kids to school, I would sneak off to Lidl to just buy some jelly beans because there was a Lidl near our house. I would sneak off to buy some jelly beans with my youngest brother um, because that was what we did for fun. I literally had no experience with the outside world because I was not allowed to go outside. And as a very religious Muslim, I didn't want to disobey my father, even though I did sneak off a couple of times to get some jelly beans. But I mean, can you blame me? <laughs> Like, I wasn't allowed to go to the library. Um, I used to enjoy Ramadan the most because I spent some time in mosques around Ramadan. Um, and I felt like I was in a community for about a month before being, again, isolated in my own house. Um, so that was the form of isolation that I was in. And the relationships that I had were, A, as a sister who had taken up the responsibility of my mother. So I was both envied and not respected at all as a carer and secondly as just my dad's punching bag both emotionally and as the years went on physically um, my brother who is two years younger than me certainly went through more of it because they never got along never ever got along I'm sorry for the noise no one respects me and my craft um, yeah, my brother definitely bore the brunt of it because he, they, my dad and he just never got along. Um, you know, when I would do things behind my dad's back, and it wasn't often that I did, but when I did do things behind my dad's back, I would actually at least be smart about hiding it. And my brother wasn't really gifted at doing that. So he would get caught a lot and he would get beaten a lot. And it's really, really unfortunate. Um, and, um, uh, you know, as the years sort of as the days sort of went by and I put up with less and less of my dad's bullshit I slowly became a punching bag as well physically um so my dad was the kind of dad that talks at you screams at you and shouts at you um the reasons why he beat me were very sporadic sometimes it was just because he needed to basically blow off some steam because one time he literally hit me so hard in my face that I fell to the ground simply because there was too much oil in a frying pan um and I mean in my brain it was like maybe technically he's not allowed to do that but he's my father so I can't really like yell at him or anything um and that's how I was living and I I mean I don't want to focus on that I mean I can definitely go into detail on that in a different video about me and my daddy issues but um, I wanted to talk about my lived-in experience since leaving that situation like I want to express how I feel because I feel as though people who you know want to leave their abusive situations are very terrified of the life that they are going to live after leaving you know a place which is terrifying but they're leaving into an unknown and it was something that I feared and I feel as though as as though I have this responsibility now to tell you what I found um, and I might do a separate video for like what I found since like dropping the hijab because I've done a couple of hijab videos but I don't think I've done what one quite like this about what I've realized since you know dropping the hijab you know what I'm saying so I would like to do this and then maybe I'll do one for that as well um and we can do other topics you know leave your suggestions about dating good love life and traveling whatever um but I would like to talk about leaving an abusive home and what I found um and you know I'm not going to separate it into like pros and cons I feel like that would really box me in um because I think that I will just present it as what I found. Um, and I would also like to share something that I told one of my best friends and he was completely online. There were actually 10 people who 
were complete strangers to me um, who really, really urged me to leave that situation and I will forever be grateful. It is a debt that I can never pay um, forward and I will always be grateful to them and they are like family to me now. Um, and at that point they were just online friends who I will always consider family and even if they are on the other side of the world I will run, I will swim, I will crawl to them if they need me. Um, but one of my closest friends at that time, his name is Simon, and it, normally when I sit on my bed and I'm normally doing a, um, a, you know, recording a video, he's always in the background of my videos because there's this one picture that I love of him that I have stuck on my wall. You must have seen it. I wish I was sitting on my bed right now, but honestly, I can't do that today. It is too fucking hot. Um, but I was telling him, he is one of my closest friends, and I was telling him that um, if I leave my house, you know, it, it's a cage, but it's all I've known. If I leave my house, you know, I, I open, and I think I've mentioned this in another video as well, I open a door into a hallway that has infinite doors, and I don't know what's behind any of them, and that terrifies me. Um, and it was kind of like a, a mental image that I had of the world because I didn't know anything about the world. When I first left my father's house, I didn't even know that I, I couldn't pay like a cash fare on a bus because I hadn't been on a bus for so long. Um, and a very lovely Indian Muslim man in a corner shop had told me that I can't just pay a, like money forward on a bus. I, I needed to get an Oyster card. Um, and I was like that out of touch with the world because I had been in isolation for so long and the the unknowns really really scared me um, and really really terrified me and le taking that leap forward you know not knowing anything that was going to happen past you know beyond reporting my father and leaving that abusive situation um, it was really really difficult for me to wrap my head around um, and that's something I like to call the door story. You know, I've opened a few of those doors and now I would like to share my experiences with, the do with those doors. Um, so I'm very comfortable with strangers now because of my isolation and because I no longer have a family because I'm completely disowned, which is a whole other story. But I am completely completely neutral with strangers and you can introduce me you know you can intru introduce yourself to me in any way shape or form but it has no effect on me like I'm quite naturally um, defensive if I don't know you but as soon as I am aware that you mean me no harm I am completely fine with you I have no struggle with strangers I make very quick connections with strangers and if that bond you know strengthens you know it takes two to make a friendship if that bond strengthens then those people become very very close and dear people to me i moved to the area that i'm in in october which is when i also started this channel and i can honestly say that i have made um you know many many acquaintances and quite a few close friends in a very short amount of time and I never thought that I was capable of that because as I said while I was in school I was the weird kid who just got along with everyone and had no close friends I, 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 ha I, had, I had a really difficult time making friends so I thought if I go in, out into the world and I have no family you know who do I kind of rely on when I need something um, and I have found that I have made extremely close friends in a very short amount of time. So, you know, for those of you who are worried about that, please don't be. Because your lack of social skills, as long as you introduce yourself that way and you're like, hey, I'm not good at making friends, can I be your friend? As long as you're open and you're honest, uh, I've, I've found that it's the easiest way to make friends. Obviously, don't share all your vulnerabilities like me all at once. That's kind of a bad thing it's kind of frowned upon um but you know as long as you are open and you're honest about you know who you are and what your personality is like and what your experiences are you'll be okay 
in my opinion anyway, from my experience. And my experience is, you know, fairly recent, fairly fresh. So that's what I'm giving you. Um, in terms of my experiences, because I was isolated for so long and I followed such a totalitarian idea, like it encompasses every single aspect of your life from the moment you wake up to the moment you fall back asleep, because I followed such a regimented way of life, now my experiences are such that I am never bored, ever, doing anything. I can meet someone who, you know, teaches math, and they can talk to me about math for hours, and I will just be interested. I will be endlessly interested, and that is, I feel as though that is going to continue happening. Um, I have yet to meet a truly boring person or a truly boring place. Um, I would say that one of my worst experiences was in an embassy and I still can't really say that, you know, I was bored there. I was angry there. I was, you know, hot in the face. I was, but I still managed to, you know, find myself interested in different things. And I think that that's one of the most positive experiences that I've had since leaving isolation is that I, you can never, you will never catch me being bored. Um, the only time that I will be bored is if you tell me to meet you at a time and you are extremely late. And I'm not talking like 10, 15 minutes. I'm talking like half an hour to an hour. Y'all know who you are. <clears throat> Alicia, <clears throat> you're late for everything. Um, but um, yeah. I have found that I can never be bored and even if I'm waiting for you and you are late I will find things to do <laughs> like I will talk to homeless people I'll listen to their stories you know I'll talk to people who are waiting around in the train I'll give people directions I'll talk to people who've had a bad day you know grab a coffee with someone while I wait and maybe that's strange maybe that's weird but you know my philosophy in life now is that everything happens too quickly and life is too short so I'm just going to try and fill it with, with as many experiences as I can and like as long as I am not bored I'm doing the living if I'm angry if I'm upset if I am happy if I am excited I'm living and that is that is all I can ask for if I am bored that is when I truly know I like I've I'm at a loss of living um, so that's one thing um, the other thing that I would say which is positive is that I feel as though I am truly untouchable um, because I'm so open about the things that I'm vulnerable about whether it be my self-esteem issues or my daddy issues or my you know my past my abuse you know my relationship with Islam my relationship with God my you know all my issues because I am open and I'm not just open on social media I'm also open in person like if someone asks me oh you know uh, how's your parents I'll be like oh my mom is dead and my dad's a dickhead so you know I, I, I'm, I'm quite open about things like that maybe I won't say it like that if you ask me but I, I am quite an open person and since I just put it all out there I do feel as though that makes me untouchable to an extent because people have come to me and said some really horrible things to me and I have frightened myself with how unaffected I am by it at times. Um, like truly unaffected. Like people send me death threats on the daily. People, like a few weeks ago someone told me that they would have drowned me as a child. And I literally laughed at that because my dad actually tried to kill me and failed. So, I mean, I win, you know? <laughs> Um, and maybe that's really morbid. Maybe that's really, really fucked up in a way. But it's positive for me because I am more or less untouchable. Um, and I think the other thing is dealing with a narcissist for so long. Like my dad is a pure psycho fucking narcissist. Like, I don't know. He hasn't been diagnosed. I'm just assuming because of the way that he is and the way that he has behaved according to other people for his entire life. Dealing with someone like that, I feel as though I have picked up traits to really be a soothing experience for everyone. You meet me in person and I am not the kind of person to amp you up. I am the kind of person that will 
tone you down. If you are if you are coming to me with an angry looking face, unless you are blood, because for some reason it doesn't work on them. But if you are a stranger and you are angry at me for the beliefs that I hold or for the views that I, you know, have or for whatever reason and you are angry at me, you will come to me and you will not be angry very, for very long because I am just a purely soothing experience. I don't want an argument. I don't want drama. Cut all the bullshit and just tell me what your problems are so I can listen to them. That is my deal. Um, so I feel as though I've, I, I mean, I certainly haven't figured out everyone, but I feel as though I've figured out angry people because I was an angry person for a very long time and now I'm, you know, just living my life. Um, the, the things that I will say that hurt me in a sense and the things that I'm still sort of working through besides like all the physical and emotional pain which is something that I have also written down is the invalidation when people don't believe me about the things that I have gone through and it's not just like a you know a shocked disbelief I can kind of get that but it's when I tell a story to someone and they just invalidate it by saying oh everyone goes through that yes everyone goes through that but you are still entitled to the pain that you feel. You are still entitled to your emotions. You're still allowed to feel pain because you are a being that feels pain. <laughs> I am a being that feels pain, so allow me to be in pain. <laughs> it, it, it's not that difficult. And it's, it's one thing that I've learned is that people who are out of touch, and I have a really close friend actually who's recently come to this conclusion who, because he's had quite an easy life, um, he, and I'm not going to mention him, but he, when we would talk and I would bring up these issues of like domestic violence and things like that, he would oversimplify the solution to just being like, oh, you should just leave that situation when really it's a lot more complicated than that. And I fully understand it coming from someone who has not been through that experience but the invalidation really, really stings. <laughs> it, it stings regardless of me understanding where you're coming from. And I just wish that, you know, people could be a little bit more empathetic to those kinds of things. Um, yeah, that, that is something that you, if you are leaving a situation of isolation and abuse, neglect, you know, whatever it is, um, you will come across people who will invalidate your experience in one way or another and it's I think it's very important to be prepared for that because not everybody will have had the same experience as you. Um, there's the physical pain uh, <laughs> that I'm still recovering from. I have TMJ in my jaw so um, right now it's fine but periodically my jaw will lock up or a muscle in here will tense um, where I won't be able to open my mouth fully or like chew like a normal human being or eat food like a normal human being and I'll have to have everything through a straw because of how hard I was hit in the face by my dad on multiple occasions so I'm still dealing with that I still have a couple of scars but they're not super super visible um they've more or less faded uh I don't have like any like I used to have quite severe pain like in my upper body and my neck but I think that's gone down over time um, I didn't really do physio for it because I'm really not the kind to go to the doctor which is a bad thing it's a bad thing except for my my mental health which is a good thing but for my physical health I don't tend to do that um, and it's a bad thing and I should be better at it but I used to have quite severe pain in my back and in my neck but that's gone down but I do feel as though my body heals quite quickly um, I have a few scars or I did have a few scars on my arms but those like I have one here but it those have like more or less disappeared um, so my like I used to I, I didn't used to cut a lot when I was younger but when I did I noticed that my skin healed up pretty quickly and I don't really scar um, like I had a scar up here because I walked into a door once and my glasses cut my eye and like that scar has almost completely disappeared um, so my skin has healed mir quite miraculously if I'm honest like I have great skin um, but the physical pain in my jaw is the only thing that's reminiscent of it like if I am in a lot of emotional anguish I will feel 
like the pain in my back and in my neck but I think that's more mental than it is actually physical um, I don't know I'm not a professional I'm just I'm just telling you what I feel <laughs> um, the psychological pain is still there and I feel as though it will be there for a very very long time um, and I am working through that and I am figuring myself out and I still have my depression but I'm working through it and I am like right now I'm very very happy I dyed my hair I'm a new woman you know um, but psychological pain will be there and I think it's really really important for when you leave a bad situation to give yourself time to deal with that both by yourself and with people you are close to um, do not suffer in silence do not push down your emotions because it will fuck you up later Tr take my word for it it will um, so if you like my philosophy in life now in terms of crying is if I need to cry and I am in a room full of people I'm gonna fucking cry if I need to do it I will do it because there should be no stigma for crying don't care who you are don't care where you are in life if you need to cry you should be able to cry and I think that that should be a thing um, the other thing that I am realizing, and this goes hand in hand with what I was saying about experiences and me not being bored, I'm having to learn very basic things. <laughs> I have, I'm inexperienced in many, many things and I am having to learn things and that's sometimes difficult and also confusing to people who already know those things and who've had the privilege of knowing those things. Um, and that will be difficult and it is difficult but it's take it in a positive way and just make it your business to learn everything that you want to learn you know and cut the bullshit like if you don't need to learn something don't do it just don't do it focus on yourself and focus on the things that you need you know identify the things that are important to you um you know food shelter all the normal basic needs and then what your secondary needs are like your emotional support and the people that you surround yourself with and the things that you need to know how to do um, and learn those things and don't take shit from anyone if you don't know something say you don't know and learn um, the last two things they're kind of connected so it, it kind of goes hand in hand with my psychological turmoil I always have a deep seated sadness in me like it, it's not a big sadness it is not like an all-encompassing sadness it's not an unmanageable sadness it's just like a worm or a, a thorn or like a like a splinter in in everything I do like I cannot be fully happy at any time in at any point in the day and I think that this may be a little bit more exclusive to me because I raised children and those children were not only did I have to leave them but they were also taken away from me um, so I always feel a little saddened by the fact that they cannot experience the same things that I experience and they cannot share my joy share my pain share everything you know even when I have I'm gonna fucking cry even when I have like ice cream I'm just sad just a tiny little bit because I cannot share that ice cream with what were essentially my children and man I can make a thousand videos on that I could make a whole lifetime a whole movie a whole fucking series on that um, about like how it truly feels like my family ripped my womb from my body when they took those children from me and I could do nothing to get them back um, and it's like it's a whole other story but if you have a child that you fear you're gonna lose in some way or if you have a similar situation where you are looking after your siblings or if you just have a really close relationship with your siblings and you know you you feel bad about leaving them or having left them just be aware that that will stay with you and you need to prepare yourself to deal with that um, and with that worm that I was talking about with that worm that's just sort of deep-seated it's like the root 
of all of my motivation. I want to struggle so that they don't have to. I want to walk so they can run. Um, you know, I want this content to go far and wide. I want my family to view it. I want people who want to hurt me to view it. I want pe I want everyone to be aware of the struggle, the real, the very real struggle of leaving a fanatical, you know, crazy family because that's what they are. They are crazy. Um, and what they were demanding of me was insane. Um, and that anger and that sadness is a positive motivation for me to keep doing this and keep, you know, pushing people to accept us simply because we don't want to fall in line. You know, you know, we're not asking for you to let us out and, you know, run around naked in the middle of the street when that's not what we're asking for. We are simply be asking to be loved and accepted. Um, and I, I, I fear that it, it, it's so not talked about like no one is talking about it and not no one but it, it is underrepresented and it's not taken seriously because everyone wants to virtue signal for bullshit they don't understand um and it's really sad because a lot of people are suffering in the process of that um and the last thing that i will say before i start answering questions and I'm aware that this is a video that's running quite long is that I have no regrets for the choices that I've made and before you make any of your choices to leave or stay or whatever just make sure you you it is what you want to do if you are unsure just leave it a little longer until you're sure I have no regrets over any of the choices I've made except for one which is, I wish I had pressed charges against my dad. I didn't. And I regret that slightly, but also I can't be fully blamed for that because I was really guilt-tripped into not doing that. Um, but aside from that, I have no regrets over what I did. I know that what I did was the right thing to do despite it being one of the most difficult things that I had to do. Um, and I'm safe in that knowledge. If you do something that you are regretful about that will haunt you and that's one thing that you do not want you cannot live with that regret okay life is too short to have that regret um so please before you make any decisions make sure that it is something that you truly wholeheartedly want to do and i will always be in your corner i will always be in your corner for you to leave an abusive situation and it, it, it truly is one of the most difficult things to do because you have to go against people who are meant to love you and people who you love despite everything that they have done to you. And I fully understand that. But make sure that you are safe in the knowledge that what you will do is of your own making and you won't. Because if you have regrets, you run the risk of going back and that is worse than leaving and you know not making it it's worse in my opinion anyway so be sure be sure in in my opinion you don't have to take my advice that's all i'm saying um i would like to get into some questions now um, and i'll paraphrase them and throw up some screenshots of the questions um so the first one How was the transition from like a silent submissive woman to an, you know, a powerful, you know, outspoken one? Have I always been like that or was it something that just happened? I think I've always kind of had a small hero or heroine complex. Um, I've always wanted to fight for the little guy. When I was a Muslim, I really toted Muslim values and talked about how Muslims were oppressed all the time. Um, and, you know, I... I'm a very zero to a hundred person. I don't do things by halves. I do, I go hard or I go home. I give it my all or I don't do it. Um, so when I was a Muslim, I did my best to be a Muslim. And once I left and once I had nothing to lose, um, and that 
you know, the day that I started the first video that I posted on this channel, the day that I decided to do that, was the day that I arrived in this house and I had nothing to lose. Um, and I think that that was my driving force for doing this. And if you are in a similar situation, unless you fear for your life, which is the only exception that I will make, and I, I must stress this, if you fear for your life, do not do this. <laughs> but if you are relatively safe and you have nothing to lose, do it. Get your story out there, be heard, fuck the haters, fuck the bullshit, fuck the people who invalidate you. Make yourself known and grow and live your life. Because honestly, you've suffered so much, you are entitled to share that pain. You are entitled to, you know, express your sadness and, you know, do what you have to do to become better. And if this is a way for you, I would say do it. Um, the second question. Um, how do I warm to people now? Um, do I still feel uh, like I can't really talk to people or do I feel isolated? As I said before, like I get on with strangers a lot better than I do with people I used to know, which is, I feel as though really tr really rare i think my battery just died um so within like my past life or like friends from my past um i trust them significantly less than complete strangers sometimes um and that's just me that's just my trust issues but i will say that i after leaving islam i did not view ex-muslim content for a really long time because i just did not want to be exposed to anything to do with Islam, even if it was against Islam. Um, and I didn't go to an ex-Muslim meetup until this year, like early this year. And the first time I did, I'm pretty sure it was in January. The first time I did, I told my entire story and I was crying for a really long time. <laughs> and I thought that would happen. And honestly, I'm kind of glad that it happened because I can go to ex-Muslim meetups now and be completely normal. And, you know, be around people who I can just sit around and gossip with and it's fun. It's nice. Um, but the first few times where I had to meet people who were from a similar background to me, I did find it really difficult because I was very nervous about what would, what people would think of me if I would be an outcast, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, I don't have very severe um, abandonment issues. Like I can, I have been able to leave people um, who are bad for me and have people leave me who are bad for me without too much, um, you know, psychological turmoil. Um, but uh, at the same time, I feel as though if I get close to what I have, <laughs> if I get close to ex-Muslims, I view them as family. I don't really want to get involved romantically with anyone who's an ex-muslim at least it's not in my it's not in my little docket list of things to do so i immediately immediately homogeneously sort of view them as family um and i'm really scared of losing that um so it was very difficult for me to get into that but in terms of everyone else no i i had a really easy time you know getting to know strangers um the next question is was I comfortable with other religious people yes I was I lived in the UK I had to be <laughs> I, I wasn't telling people that they were going to burn in hell I wasn't constantly talking about religion with them but if they asked me about religion which oftentimes they did while I was a Muslim because I used to cover my face and that used to bring up a lot of questions I would talk about religion and I was completely I was always completely comfortable and I was always a curious person I always wanted to know where people came from and why they did the things they did and I do think that that was a very big factor in why I left Islam um, because it just didn't seem okay that all these good people were going to burn in hell simply because they didn't stroke Allah's ego. Um, the last question, which is not really related, but I'll, I'll address it briefly, is what if all of this is actually real? Like, what if Islam is real, hell is real, Allah is real, and, you know, what if it's all real? 
Um, and if I was to agree that everything is real, my argument would be, and every time I think about whether or not it's real, is, is Allah a God worthy of worship? No, because he's a cunt, honestly. He's, he's a tyrant, and in the same way that I would not stand for a, a, a tyrant ruler, in the same way that I would not stand for that and take that shit, I'm not going to worship a God that is not worthy of worship, and I will happily go to hell than worship a God that is cruel and spiteful and just all around just a dick. Um, and the other thing is that if Allah is truly merciful, why would Allah punish me for simply believing what I believe? That is my reasoning, and I can do a whole other video on that. I think I have a very brief outline for a video like that, but that is my that is my way of dealing with the idea of burning forever. And honestly, I would not want to be in paradise with a bunch of squares who, you know, fucked kids and... <laughs> Sorry. I would not want to be in paradise with a bunch of squares. I would rather be burning in hell with all of my friends for eternity. I would rather be doing that. So, I mean, that is my, that is my answer to that. Um, I hope that this video was insightful. I'm sorry if I'm making a lot of hand gestures. It's very hot and it makes me very strange. Um, I hope the sound comes out properly. I hope the video didn't just die halfway through and there's all of the content has been recorded. But thank you for watching and I hope that this was in any way helpful or insightful or cathartic for any of you who are going through what I went through. And, you know, if you have anything to, you know, share with me, be that emotional pain, support, hatred, you know, share it in the comments. If you're not, um, you know, comfortable sharing things, you know, publicly, feel free to DM me on Twitter. All of my links are in the description down below. If you liked this video, please do leave a thumbs up, subscribe to my content, even though it's a lot of the time it's nonsense. Um, if you didn't like this video, please tell me why and leave a dislike. Feel free, live your life, be happy. Um, and if you have an experience to share, share it. Uh, thank you for watching me and I will see you in the next video. I don't know if I will be uploading on Friday because I will be in Amsterdam on Friday, but hopefully I will have a video for you on Wednesday, which is the day before I leave for Amsterdam. Amsterdam will be very interesting and Halima will be with me. So hopefully we can make a video together. Um, but I'll be staying at her house. But until then, I will see you most likely on Wednesday. Um, so yeah, thank you and goodbye.